the pharmaceutical quality system, is it fit for purpose or do we call it, is it fish for purpose? This presentation is a brief overview of what a typical quality system should really look like within an organization. There are various types of companies from manufacturers of biotech, pharmaceutical and cell gene therapy, medicinal products. There are also the marketing authorization holders that are essentially are an office entity that has a quality system to support the marketing authorization holders obligations. There are also the distributors that uh, store and handle medicinal products. And there are the transportation providers or freight forwarders that move product from one part of the world to another. My name is Sanjay Nadaraj. I'm a consultant at Inglasia Farm Solutions. And having worked with various clients from large pharma to small pharma companies, um, whether that be uh, pharmaceutical cell gene therapy or biotechnology medicines. This also includes uh, distributors of medicines uh, across the world. I have seen various uh, quality systems and I've also been asked to support the clients with making improvements to their quality systems. A lot of these systems have grown over the years, especially in large organizations where they've, through acquisitions and mergers, uh, done exactly the same for quality systems, where the quality systems have grown and grown over the years with companies uh, coming together. And these systems have become really cumbersome uh, and hard to uh, follow on a day to day basis. And it really makes it difficult for the individuals following the processes to be able to perform uh, their individual tasks. And especially when organizations are trying to become even more leaner with uh, less staff and more work, having procedures that are excessive in words and really do not make it clear to anyone um, what the process is, it adds that complexity to be able to do things in the most compliant and efficient manner. What I'm going to be covering in this uh, short presentation is really what can be done to make sure that what you create is really uh, fit for purpose. What is a PQS or pharmaceutical quality system? Essentially, this can be within any organization that um, handles medicinal products or even in any other sector. However, the focus of this presentation is purely to do with medicinal products. The quality system in a nutshell should ensure the safety, the quality and the efficacy of the medicinal product. Whether you be a manufacturer, whether you be an organization performing early stage clinical trials, whether you're a wholesaler, wholesaling commercial medicinal products, a freight forwarder that's moving medicinal products across the globe, or whether you're a head office that holds a marketing authorization for, for medicines, you all need to have some form of a pharmaceutical quality system in place. When you bring someone into your organization with a quality background, make sure that that individual is capable of understanding your business and being able to support you in creating the quality system that's fit for your organization. How do I make it fit? Now, the first thing is when you do have someone coming in to your quality function within your business, whatever whatever size of business that is or, or, or what aspect of the supply chain you are looking at, uh, whether that be early stage development in clinical trials through to the point at which the medicine is being commercialized, uh, you're in the supply chain where you're wholesaling the medicines and whether it be the freight forwarders moving that product for you. The quality system will need to be relevant for what your organization does in that supply chain. The person coming into the quality role there should really 
get to meet up with the people across departments, understand what they do, why they do what they do. And once they've understood that, they need to be able to be creative. Using their knowledge from previous organizations where they've worked in quality, seeing the good, the bad and the ugly, and to be able to apply that knowledge to be creative, creating a set of procedures for the PQS that will be very much aligned to your organization's operational activities. Now remember, you could be an organization that's literally 10 people. You don't want to be bringing someone in from a big pharma industry to come into your organization with that big quality system mindset and try to cram it all in to your small business of 10 people. You can bring them in. However, as part of assessing their credentials, evaluate how they would go about creating a PQS that would fit your organization. See how creative they are. Look for examples of their creative skills. Have they done any form of assessment, gap assessment, evaluated what is the need, and have been able to develop something that's relevant for that business? So look for those examples and see whether those person skills will be transferable to be able to adapt and create a system that's very much relevant for what you do in your organization and at whichever point that is in the, in the supply chain of that medicinal product. So what do I need to know? Well, I need to know what are the activities being performed on site? What's the product we're dealing with, most importantly? So we build everything around the product. Understand the people, their job roles. See what critical aspects of their roles play with respect to the product. So, for example, you could have someone that's generating artwork that's going to be used to uh, to be used in the patient information leaflet or on the on the packaging, on the outer packaging. Now, how do they control that activity? How are they going to make sure that the information that's on the packaging is accurate and is safe for the for the pe for the people that are going to uh, read that information? Make sure that it's accurate and 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 ensures that it uh, brings along safety with that. So that's just an example of uh, artwork. When it comes to manufacturing, again, look at the processes, look at the, 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 the procedures around the processes being followed. Are they going to have any adverse impact on the physical handling of the medicinal product? So really, you need to get in to the different departments, understand what they do, why they do it, work with the people most importantly, and, and get them involved. Best practice is always to get people around a table, map out the process, use post-its, use um, diagrams, uh, and, and get everyone to understand that one way of working. And when, when that's figured out, encapsulate that into, into a procedure through a process flow, and then some words that elaborate in a bit more detail on anything that's specific uh, that uh, needs a bit more focus on. It's very important that creativity will really help people understand better what the process is about. And when you do that, it's a lot easier for anyone within the organization to, to better understand it, and also anyone external coming in, such as a regulatory authority inspector, or even an external customer or a client that wants to understand your pharmaceutical quality system and, and what it's about.
And also remember that regulations play a big part in, in, in all of this. Um, so you can be creative. You also need to have the knowledge. You need to know what the current regulations are and make sure that your creativity and what you put on paper do also ensure primarily the patient safety, the quality and the efficacy. And when I say that, it can have a direct or indirect impact on the medicinal product that the patient takes. Whether you be at a manufacturing facility actually making the medicinal product, always bear that in mind. Even if you're someone working at a head office or in an affiliate office where you're the marketing authorization holder, you're still dealing with regulatory activities, generating artwork uh, for your local market, you need to make sure that the artwork uh, is is accurate and it's safe for the for the end user. So you're not actually physically handling the product, but you're handling the information that's going to go on the product, and that could have an adverse impact. So again, you need to make sure that you put the right controls in place around how you manage your artwork generation, how you communicate with your manufacturing facility to make sure that the artwork is accurately transferred onto uh, the site in terms of sending off to the printers to print off the leaflets and cartons um, prior to, to packaging and, and then uh, releasing the medicinal product. Also, if you're a transportation provider, a freight forwarder, you're going to be moving product across the world. Temperature sensitivity is a big issue that I've seen. It's very important to make sure that you have a lot of controls around that. You have procedures written around that. And the procedures should reflect exactly how you work with your network of supply chain partners and how you would effectively communicate with your partners in the event of any excursion or any sort of damage to, to the medicine products that you handle. And remember, you don't just do it once and leave it and, and, and hope it works for, for, for the rest of time. It's something that needs to be reevaluated on a regular basis through people following processes, people perhaps even failing uh, to follow the PQS processes. And through the CAPA investigations, you're able to identify the root cause of these, uh, and it tends to stem from processes not being very well nailed down. Make sure that this ongoing process of improvement is, is regularly monitored and regularly improved because that's essentially what the PQS is about. The patient safety, the quality, the efficacy, and making sure that the standard is consistently maintained at a high level. So thank you for listening. I hope you found this short presentation informative and also giving you an idea of what you should be thinking about when you design and implement a pharmaceutical quality system within your organization where you're handling medicinal products. If you enjoy this presentation, please do like it. And also, if you have any comments, and I'm sure you would, because um, my my presentation here is not uh, holistic. It, it, it will most likely miss certain pieces of detail, which I'm sure I'll be grateful that um, people can contribute and comment on um, to, to further enhance this message that I'm trying to get across on how to implement the best possible PQS within your organization. Thank you for listening.